You might want to turn your volume up for this volumetric breakdown tutorial of sorts. Hey guys, we're my test by Kai. I'm Kai, and today we are back in Blender 2.81 once again, taking a look at uh, this cool volumetric cinematic scene that I just made a little bit ago, uh, just a few seconds ago rather. Um, and it's really cool. It has three kind of main focuses here. It's got uh, three different Suzannes. We got one in the front, we got one in the middle, and one in the back here. So it's not too crazy. Let me go to material mode real quick. Um, I have a plane down at the bottom, which is solid black. Then I have, of course, the three monkeys, and then I have behind those three monkeys, I have uh, some lamps. So I have one lamp right here, which is set to a really high value, which is uh, 10,000, and I have this on a nice little tealish, tealish blue color, something like that. Um, and then I have that same exact lamp twice right here. I, hit, I just hit Shift D, duplicated it, and then moved it over here uh, twice. So I have two different ones of these, both on 50,000. 50, Thousand, um, and then uh, I have one back here as well, back to the the furthest away, which is uh, so far away that I needed to boost the um, power a little bit. So I boosted it by you know the regular one hundred and fifty thousand that you do um, <laughs> to two hundred thousand, and uh, and now. If you can take a look here, if I have the volumetric uh, actually on, I have the volumetric on, but if I turn it off, I'm going to split my window into two, and then go to the shader editor here, and then uh, just go ahead and go up to uh, object, go from object to world, and now you can see what I did here. So the background is solid black, solid black, and then I have a mix shader here with volume absorption and volume scatter. Hit shift A, just search, and then volume, and then you can get both of those right there. I have the density of the volume absorption absorption on zero, and then the volume scatter density on 0.1, and then the uh, this guy right here on uh, on on solid one. Now I have this guy uh, on both of these on solid white. So both of these guys are on solid white. They should be anyway. Both those guys are on solid white, and then I have um, this guy right here, of course, set to 50 uh, 0.5 percent. Uh, not percent, but 0.5 value rather. <laughs> um, there we go. So it mixes both of those perfectly now. If I were to uncheck these, go back to the rendered. Oh, and also I have this giant um, lamp up here as well. I forgot about that. So a giant lamp with on one million, by the way, one million brightness, uh, almost white with a very slightly blue tint to that, bluish purpley kind of, I guess. Um, yeah. So turn my overlays back off, and you can see how um, the volumetric will actually affect the scene. So if I un if I unhook both of these. If I, un if I un unhook the one, you won't really see anything happen because this is more of a. Let me hook that back up. This is more of a thing for c for color. So you can see if I do that, then it doesn't really do anything. If I change the color, it will obviously change the scene quite a bit, though. So you can come up with some pretty dramatic uh, tones just by using uh, volume absorption here. So I'm gonna put that back on white and turn the density on zero. So um, volume scatter. If I unhook both of these, you can see this is what we have. Doesn't look very good at all. We just got some lights. Some rim lights from all of the actual point lamps, which I can go ahead and actually hide, and you can see almost nothing, almost nothing that looks good with all those point lamps disabled. Then I can hit Alt H to unhide them, H to hide, Alt H to unhide them. Hold down Shift to select all these things over here, by the way. Hold down, sh ooh, no, hold down Shift, select all those. All right, so if I hook this back up, you can see we have, you can, you can see that we have uh, really cool. Really cool stuff going on here. And the way I got the shine on the monkeys here is I go ahead and go to the scene tab, turn on screen space reflections. You see the difference that that makes. Go back into the camera's view. I also have a little bit of depth of field, but yeah, I'll get into that in a second. Screen, screen space reflections really helps define the shapes a lot. You can see here. And I also turned on refraction just because I was going to do a glass thing, but then I decided against it last second. So you don't need that, but I have it on. Uh, screen space reflections, yeah, that helps a lot to fill in some of the shape that we're missing. You can leave it off; it looks a lot more mysterious that way. But yeah, cool. Uh, next thing, the depth of field. So if I select the camera uh, and go to the camera tab here and scroll on down all the way to depth of field and check depth of field on and off, it won't do that. But I uh, I I turn the focus object onto Suzanne, the default Suzanne right there, the first one, which is her. Um, and then I turn the f-stop way down. De by default, it's like up here, defaultly. Um, and then I'm going to turn it all the way down. You can see that blur back there. Now, I can put the focus back on this Suzanne by just checking Suzanne 002. And now this one's the clear one instead of everything else, which is pretty cool as well. Um, so, I'm going to leave that. What does it look like on the second one? No, the second one. Eh, I'll leave it on the first one because it looks cool. 
Um, and also, that, I think that's it, actually. I think I didn't do anything else. Yeah, this plane down here that I have on the ground, the plane, the big plane, I just hit S to scale it up a little bit. You can see, just see it, S to scale. And then I turn the roughness all the way down. We don't need that. And the specular all the way down as well. You could turn the specular all the way up. Actually, that might look pretty good. Yeah. If you turn the specular all the way up and then turn the specular tent all the way up, that might be good. That might be fine. Maybe a little bit of no, not no roughness. That looks weird. Um, but yes, that is that. I can also, with one of the Suzanne selected, doesn't matter which one, I can turn the transmission all the way up here um, and, and do some cool stuff with glass. Ooh, maybe clear coat. We'll do clear coat and maybe a little tiny bit of roughness on that. Just a little bit. Yeah, but I'm just fooling around now. So that is going to be it for today. Just wanted to break this down really quickly. You guys always ask me about volumetric stuff. So let me real quick just select all these lamps here. And I can just change these colors just individually. Um, maybe we'll do an orangey type. Yeah, like a blood orange kind of thing. Oh, yeah. I like that. That looks pretty cool. Um, and then we're missing one. There we go. Cool. So now we have a, a completely different type of feel in this scene and stuff. And like I said, you can just just really quickly and really easily just change uh, these values to get some pretty cool things uh, in the scene. But uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for today's tutorial. Hope you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one. But until then, bye-bye.